Mm -hmm. That's the way the default is set. And I can't do anything about that. Um, mm -hmm. All right, let's take care of one thing before we do anything else. Oh, that one problem? Yes. The one that gave me so much difficulty. Now, part of, part of why it gave me difficulty is that it's a vector problem. It's also a trig problem. Okay. And the fact that it was in the no calculator section made it even stranger for me. Mm -hmm. And after getting home and solving it using vectors and trig, I asked myself, well, you haven't had vectors yet. You haven't had trig yet. And even if you did, this would be a very difficult question. So it's in that pamphlet because they want you to do this by back solving it. Okay. It's the only tools you have to solve this problem, actually. Uh, nobody that has just had algebra, geometry, and a little bit of trig could solve this, I don't believe. But let's talk about back solving it. I'm surprised I didn't see that when I looked at it. Okay. It's not easily back solved. You have to do one thing first. Okay, what is that? Approximate how long it's going to take that vehicle to get to the bottom of the hill. Hmm. You just have to make a guess? Well, you'll notice something after you do. Approximately how long is that? That's I, I did the math. The way I did this, I came home and I used my calculator. It turns out that that's 100.08. Okay. Okay? So, and you could certainly approximate it and say 100. Yeah. How long does it take it to do 100 meters at 16 meters per second, approximately? Just round um. Come up with an like approximate. Six or seven seconds. Okay. Now, go into your answers. And if we, we know that the vertical drop has to be four feet in that six or seven seconds, right? Uh-huh. So whichever of these answers gives an answer of four is our solution. Oh, okay. We don't need to know vectors. We don't need to know the trick. What we need to know is that in the amount of time it takes to roll down that hill, it's going to drop by four feet. So whatever answer, in other words, 1,300 is the starting elevation, but the part that's mm -hmm. being subtracted off of it is the vertical distance that it drops. Well, if you take the multiple choice answers they gave you, Certainly, if I plug in four or six seconds for T, it would have dropped 96 feet. That can't be right. If I go to this answer and I plug in six seconds, ah, I get exactly four meters. Okay. That's the right answer. And oh, okay. The only tool you really have for solving it is back solving. And... It's super difficult because before you can back solve it, you have to estimate the length of the incline and estimate how many seconds it's going to take to get to the bottom. All of that without a calculator. So this is a very strange problem. I would really be shocked if you ever encountered a problem like this on the actual SAT test. Uh, okay. So anyway. Uh, okay. That's, well, thank you. That's that, yeah. Um, what else, What do you want to cover tonight? You have some stuff? Yeah. So okay. Stuff you can verbalize right. or do you need to send me a picture? Um, I'm looking right now. I don't think I need to send you a picture. I think it's just verbal stuff. Okay. There's just a lot of verbal problems. Great. Right. Shoot. So All right. what we learned in class today was um, about graphing stuff on the X, Y, and Z plane. Okay. And so I understand that pretty well, but then it gets into um, these, like, word problems. Okay. I'm a little confused on how to solve these. Okay. Let's have it. Um, one word problem. So the first one is, 
In Super Bowl I on January 15, 1967, the Green Bay Packers defeated the Kansas City Chiefs by a score of 35-10. to 10. The total points scored came from 13 uh, different scoring plays, which were a combination of touchdowns, extra point kicks, and field goals, worth 6, 1, and 3 points. Am I going too fast for you? No, I'm a football fan. <laughs> okay. The same number of touchdowns and extra points, point kicks were scored. There were six times as many touchdowns as field goals. How many touchdown, touchdowns, extra point kicks, and field goals were scored during the game? All right. The way you start out, everybody hates word problems, and it's because they never start them out correctly. Okay. If you start out a word okay. problem correctly, they actually become rather easy. They're not hard at all. The way okay. you start out a word problem is you define your variables. And how do you do that? You look to the last sentence. What does the last sentence say? Um, oops, sorry, I closed my phone. <laughs> the last sentence says, how many touchdowns, extra points, and field goals were scored during the game? So we're going to let X be the number of touchdowns. We're going to let Y be the number of extra points. And we're going to let Z be the number of field goals. Okay. And it's important to say number. In other words, when you're defining your variables, be very specific. Okay. A lot of times these word problems will have how many uh salads did he order and there's also the price of each salad so you want to distinguish you want to be as specific as possible uh, and, okay. and this is very specific this is the number of TDs scored number of touchdowns scored okay now okay. the first thing they gave us was that you're going to need to reopen it again I'm, I, 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 no it's okay I didn't uh, pick up on the three equations. We're gonna ha we have three variables here, and we're going to need three equations, which we're then going to have to solve for each one. I believe okay. one of the equations was the number so, of touchdowns was the same as the number of extra points? Yes. So there's one equation. X equals Y. X equals Y. Um, another one was... There were six times as many touchdowns as field goals. So X is equal to 6Z. Right? Okay, and um, that's the only two that they give us. There were also 45 points scored. Um, yeah, there are 45 points scored, and the score came from 13 different scoring plays. Right, 13 different scoring plays. So that's where we're going to get our third equation from. Let me think about that for a second. Um, well, I'm not sure the 13 plays is needed, but we know that you get six points for a touchdown. So 6x is the number of points you're going to get from all your touchdowns, mm -hmm. plus 1 point for an extra point, so 1 times y, plus 3 times z has to equal 45. Okay. There's your three equations and three unknowns. And then you have to solve that system of equations and unknowns. And it's not, this one's actually pretty easy to solve because um, they've defined X in two different spots. <coughs> and so I can take the third equation and where I see Y, I can substitute X. And where I see and where I see Z, I can substitute X divided by 6. Okay. Which gives me the following. 6X plus X plus 
3 times x divided by 6, which is what z is equal to, has to equal 45. Now we can solve it. Now we have one equation and one variable. What is that? Uh, 8 and 1 half x equals 45. So that is uh, 17 halves x equal 45. 17x equals 90, x equals 90. I did something wrong, didn't I? Because so. the one thing we know, x has to be an integer. I'm not yeah. integer here. Let's see, I added 6x plus one more x, that's 7x, ah, plus a half. It's not 8 and a half, it's 7 and a half, which mm. makes this 15, and now it's 15 into 90, and that goes six times. So, okay. we got six touchdowns, got six extra points, and we got two field goals, because there was three times, no, we got one field goal. Mm -hmm. because there were um, six times as many touchdowns as field goals. Yeah. Um, so that's our answer, right? The, that's all they yeah. want was the uh -huh. number of each. Um, yep. Notice that they said 13 plays, which is uh, irrelevant. Never used, but, I never used that number. Isn't that is that kind of like a check? Because you can check if you like your thirteen different plays for your scoring, added up to your um, scoring, like how many you know points you scored on each one, uh, or like not points you scored. That's very interesting because they don't. Oh yeah, they do add up to thirteen. I was looking at these three numbers. Mm -hmm. um, I guess yeah, that's one way to check, but not needed. Kind of an interesting way, but. Yeah, not needed. I was able to totally solve for these three numbers without that number. I didn't need to know mm -hmm. that it was 13 plays. So I'm not sure why they gave that data. Sometimes they'll just throw in data that, to try to confuse you a little bit. Huh. That's fine. Seriously. Uh, although rarely do they do that in a class. Usually you find that on an SAT test or something where they yeah. throw in unnecessary information that you don't use at all. Maybe like, I don't know, maybe SAT prep or something. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have another word problem. Okay. Is it a three, okay. is it a three variable problem? Um, I think so. Okay. I haven't read Bully's Theory yet. Okay, go ahead. Okay. You work as a disc jockey at your college radio station. You are supposed to play 32 songs within two hours. So 32 songs within two hours. Okay. Um, you are to choose songs from the latest rock, dance, and pop albums. Okay. Um, What's you the want to play... Now, before you go further, read the last sentence to me. How many of each type of song will you play? Okay, so what are our variables? Let's write our variables before we write our equations, which are going to come by the next two sentences. Um, I think our variables are rock, dance, and pop albums. This would be the number of songs of rock. Right? In other words, it wants yeah. to know the number from each. Yeah. Okay, and Z would be, okay, now go back and read the rest of the stuff. Um, okay, uh, you, play, you want to play twice as many rock songs as pop songs. So what equation will that give us? Uh, 2X equals Z. Mm, let's think about that for a moment. Remember what X is going to be. It's the number of songs that you're going to play from rock. And they mm -hmm. want that to be twice 
the number of pop. So it's got to be x equal to z. In other words, if you oh, play, if you okay. play three pop songs, you want to play six rock songs. Okay, yeah. That's an easy that. thing to make a mistake on, but that's the way to, to answer it. Do I have it right? Is let's substitute some real small, simple numbers and see if that's, if I got it backwards or I got it right. Okay, we got it right. Okay. What's the second? Thank you. And you want to play four more pop songs than dance songs. So that equation would be y equals 4z, I think. Okay. Read that sentence again. Um, four more pop songs more, than dance. More than. Four more than. That's four the more. addition. Um, That's addition. Okay. So z has to equal y plus 4. Oh, okay. And let's test and see if that's correct. If this is dance or bands? Um, it's dance? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, four more pop songs than dance songs. Yeah, for some reason I heard bands the first time yeah. I said it. Hmm. But it doesn't matter. Okay. But, okay, now let's see if this is correct. If I were to play... Uh, three dance songs, this says I should play seven pop songs. And that's exactly what that sentence says, is that you want yeah. to play four more pop songs than dance songs. The toughest part about these sub-equations here is getting the, it right. In other words, making sure you don't do 2x equals z or z plus mm -hmm. 4 equals y. Those are very easy mistakes to make. And mm -hmm. is there a third equation? There must be. Um, you are supposed to play 32 songs within two hours. Okay. Um, so what equation does that mean? 32 songs in two hours. Look at the variables. Um, How can you put that into an equation? x uh, plus y plus z equals 32. Yep. Again, the two hours is immaterial. There's my three equations. Now I just have to solve that system. Again, this is going to be relatively easy. Um, let's solve for... Let's see. Yeah, we can make each of these variables a function of uh, z pretty easily, can't we? Yeah. Okay, so what should I write in place of x? In other words, um, let's rewrite this with z's everywhere. x should equal 2, so 2z plus, um, on that second equation, you can minus 4, so y would equal uh, z minus 4 plus z minus 4 um, plus z equals 32. All right. And that's got, uh, there's 4z there. I'm going to move the 4 to the other side. So z mm -hmm. equals 9. And if z equals 9... X and then x equals 18. 18, and y equals z minus 4, so y must equal 5. 5. And oh, that, that's pretty easy. That's 32. Or, yeah, that's 32 songs. But, yeah, mm -hmm. it's interesting. It's clear now to me that um, they are purposefully giving you information that isn't pertinent. Yeah. Like the last problem, the 13 plays was not pertinent, and the two hours is completely immaterial here. Uh, you do need this part to get the x plus y plus z equals um, 32, mm -hmm. but you don't need the two hours. Okay. And I'm quite certain they put it in there just to make the problem a little harder. 
to make it more difficult to figure out these three equations because mm -hmm. you're constantly trying to figure out how am I going to work that two hours in there or in the last problem how am I going to get that 13 in there and didn't okay okay um let's just talk for a minute about graphing I'm assuming, let's see, when you do three-dimensional graphing, the X comes out like that, correct? Yeah, it kind of like intercepts the Z uh, line at a... Well, the, a, the Z takes oh. the place of the X. In other words, the Z becomes kind of the horizontal axis. Oh, uh, that's kind of not how we were taught to oh, do really? it. Oh, really? How did they do Did the Z go vertically? Yeah, the Z went where the Y goes, oh. and the Y went where the X goes. Oh, really? Oh, huh, interesting. I guess it doesn't really matter, but so that's yes. the X, that's the Z, and that's the Y? Uh, the, y uh, the, um, the X is the diagonal one, and the Z is where the, or the Y is where the X goes. Oh, okay. That might be the way I learned it uh, now that I think about it. The only thing I could remember for sure was that the X is the one that comes out the page. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Okay. And I imagine the only thing you learned was how to plot a XYZ coordinate on there, right? Yes. In other words, if I give you a coordinate that's 2, comma, 3, comma, 4, then it's going to be 2 units on the X-axis, 3 mm -hmm. units on the Y-axis, and 4 units on the Z-axis, and wherever that point ends up being somewhere in space, yeah, it would, it would be that. And that, is that all they've taught you on the three dimensions? Um, yeah, practically. Yeah. Um, be curious. You have not had vectors yet, have you? No. Because you're taking pre-calc trig, and the first semester is the pre-calc part, right? Yes. It's interesting. Um. I, I've always told people that you can take them in either order. You can take the trick first and then the pre-calc until I got that one problem you had on the SAT and realized that you can't do vectors without trig. And vectors yeah. are usually taught in the pre-calc part. But for the people that take the pre-calc first, they're probably going to do trig and then at the end of trig get to vectors. Um, Mm -hmm. is my guess. Um, okay. But even still, that problem that was on the SAT, they did not want you to solve that using vectors and trig because it would have required a calculator. So the mere fact mm -hmm. that it was in the non-calculator section meant the only tool you really had for solving it was back solving the, the way we did it, which was very complicated. But um, Okay. All right, so what else do you got? You got um, word problems or any other kinds of problems that have to do with three variables? Kind of. I have something called advanced applications. Okay. And so what it is, in, um, uh, in these problems, they want you to solve for X and Y. Um, and they also have another variable variable called the Lagrange multiplier. Okay. It's like an A. And yeah, just an A. So I can read off the problem to you, and then um, we can try and solve through it. It's kind of like just having a Z. Okay. Why don't you read the problem, and maybe I can pick up on it. Um, so, so 76 equals 2. So we get three equations. Okay. 2x plus um, a equals 0, um, 2y plus a equals 0, and then x plus y minus 4 equals 0. But they call this like a letter, it, it looks like a capital A, they call it the Lagrange, Lagrange multiplier. Okay. I'm not really sure like what that is. Here, I mean, this looks to me like three variables and three equations. 
Yeah, so I don't think it matters. I don't know why they would call it that. And they don't give you, like, it doesn't equal, like, a certain number, like, pi or anything. So, it's kind of interesting. So, if we, if we look at this equation, is all we have to do is substitute for x or y, and we'll be able to solve for the other one, right? Mm-hmm. So I might be missing something here, but if I solve this for x, then x equals minus a divided by 2. So now it's minus a divided by 2, and y is the same thing, minus a divided by 2, and move the 4 over. Um, you got minus 2a equals 8, uh, a equals minus 4. And once you solve for a, you can solve, go back and solve for x and y. Uh, I think that's what they want you to do. Yeah, I can't imagine what else it would be. Uh, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not familiar. I, I, I know the, the term Lagrange. Um, but in this particular problem, it appears to just be a third variable. Yeah, they didn't really, like, give you anything for it. No. They just said Lagrange. It says, um, these systems arise in certain um, optimization, or these systems arise in certain optimization problems in calculus. Okay, right. Right, that's where it's coming from, and that's why I was surprised to hear it. Um, because you could take a two semesters worth of calculus and not hear that word. That's not just calculus, that's in Calc 3 that you get the Lagrange formula. Uh, huh. So, but anyway, so which, which probably tells me that it's just a third variable here. Yeah, I think so. Now, notice that all three of these problems we just did, we did by substitution. Okay. That's not typical. What's typical is to have something like this. And a third one might be In other words, where you get all three of your equations, have all three variables in them, and they're all in standard format. That's standard format where all three variables are on the left in that order, x, y, and z, and the numbers on the right. And okay. Whenever you get a system of equations like this, the standard way to solve them is with elimination. Elimination ends up being a lot easier than substitution. Have you done okay. any like that? Yeah, yeah, we've done elimination before. Okay. I'm pretty familiar with that. Is this something, um, is it worth going through this solution? Um, I don't think so, actually, okay. because I've done, we, I've done a lot of work with elimination, so okay. I'm pretty comfortable with that. Yeah, the secret on these three equations is to create an equation four and five that are both missing the same variable. In other mm -hmm. words, add 1 and 2 to eliminate y, and then uh, multiply 2 by 2 and add 2 and 3, and it also eliminates y. And then you're looking at two equations and two unknowns, which you know how to solve. That's kind of a piece of cake. But that's always what you have to do, is break it down into two equations and two unknowns. Okay. 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 I've got another problem here. It's kind of another one of these like Lagrange okay. um, substitution problems. Okay. So it just gives us three equations. Okay. It says two plus two y plus two a equals zero. Um, and then two x plus one plus a equals zero. And then 2x plus y minus 100 equals 0. 
Notice that none of these are in standard format. In other words, the number is on the left. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, we wouldn't necessarily use elimination to solve this. It's going to be solved easier with substitution, uh, I think. Okay. Let me think about it for a minute. Uh, and the goal is to solve for X and Y and A? Yeah, X, Y. Yep. Or just X and Y. Okay. Uh, X, Y, and A. Okay. So we could solve this one for X in terms of A. And we can solve this one for y in terms of a. And I'm going to substitute okay. them into this third one. And I'll have some number of a plus some more number of a and a number, and I'll be able to solve for a. And once I okay. solve for a, I can go back and figure out what x and y are. And that's also part of the process whenever you're doing multiple equations, is that once you solve for one variable, you have to go back and solve for the other one. So okay. let's solve that for y. y. First of all, I can divide everything by 2. Make yeah. A 1, a 1, and a 1, making y equal negative a. Ah, negative a minus 1. <laughs> yeah, that's what I got. OK. And the second one x uh, is equal to negative a minus 1 divided by 2. Yeah. Now let's substitute those in for this. So I get 2 times x, which is negative a minus 1 divided by 2. So doesn't that just become negative a minus 1? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I try not to do too many steps at once because okay. that's a recipe for mistakes. Um, it, and especially when I'm tutoring because, you know, I don't want to do three steps in my head and, and have you lose track of what I'm doing. So yeah. I usually uh -huh. am very, very specific. When I'm substituting, I want to substitute, and then I'll do the math to simplify. Okay. okay. And y is minus a minus 1. And if I move the 100 over, then that's equal to 100. And now if I'm simplifying, I get minus 2a minus 2 mm -hmm. equals 100. So minus 2a, I wonder why it keeps coming out negative. Is that something to do with Lagrange? I, I, I don't know. They don't give me that information. So I get minus 51 for a. And okay. now it's a simple question to plug in minus 51 for that. Solve for x, or actually go, go over here. This is the best place to do it. Um, y was minus a minus 51 minus 1, so y is equal to 50. x is 50 divided by 2, so x is 25, and a is minus 51. Okay. And x equals 25? That's what I got. I had minus a minus 1 divided by 2. No, yeah, that, that's correct. That's what I got. I just had to look at it for a second. I'm sorry. Yeah. X equals 25. Cool. Okay. Let's see. No, I got that. Let's see if I have any more homework. That might have been all my homework. That's fine. Um, we, don't, we don't always need to go an hour just because you're scheduled for an hour. Uh, if you Or mm -hmm. we can switch over to SAT. I've got plenty of those problems. Um, whatever you'd like to do. Um, my other problems are just graphing on a plane, so I don't need to go over those. I'm not okay. worried about those at all. Well, graphing um, on oh, a plane, like, what's one of them? Just tell me. And then, uh, one of them is graph the point uh, 0, 0, 3, 1, 
or it's like parentheses, so parentheses zero comma three, parentheses comma uh, parentheses one comma four, parentheses um, comma parentheses two comma three, parentheses. And you're and just like and you're graphing those on the x y z plane or on the x yeah, and you just put you just put those. You put those points on the X, Y, Z plane, and then she just wants you to draw a triangle showing the plane. Right, right, right. In other words, just and, draw a line between the three points. Yeah, Which and then um, I do have actually one problem. Okay. It was a substitution problem that I was kind of having trouble with today. Okay. So it's three equations. Mm -hmm. So 2X plus 4Y minus Z equals 7. Okay. Um, x minus 2y plus 2z equals uh, negative 9. Okay. And 3x minus y plus z equals 5. Okay. Now, I always number them because I'm going to end up looking at about 8 equations on this page by the time we're finished. And if okay. you number them, it's really easy to keep them straight. Okay? So, step one is to take any two of the equations, can you eliminate a variable by adding or subtracting them immediately? Um, you could multiply the middle of the uh, equation by two, and then you could cancel out y from one and two. I could do that, but there's actually an easier two to pick where I don't have to do any multiplying at the moment. Oh, you could just do three and one. Okay. That gives us equation four. Okay. What's equation four? Um, 5x plus 3y equals 13. 12. Oh, seven, 12, sorry. Right? Okay. Now, any other two equations can be used, not the same two, but I can use mm -hmm. one and two or two and three. And I have to eliminate Z. It doesn't do any good if I eliminate a different variable for my equation five. Yeah. Because then I'll end up with two equations and three variables, and I can't go anywhere. So... Mm -hmm. This time, I do have to multiply something because it's not going to get eliminated unless I do that. Uh, so okay. how can I eliminate Z with two of the other equations? Which, you could, which two should I use? Uh, you, you should use one and two, okay. and you could multiply one by two, and that would equal your Z's on those equations. Okay, so if I multiply one by two, I've got 4X plus 8y minus 2z equals 14, and I'll draw a line through that so I'm not confused. And now I'm going to add 1 and 2 together to produce 5. So what's 5? Um, 5x uh, plus 6y equals... Uh, 14, 5, equals 5. Okay. And now we solve for one variable. How do I do that? You could change either the top or the bottom to negative. Okay, I could do that. I don't have to because you're allowed to subtract equations also. So I can okay. actually make it a little easier if I just subtract equation 5 from equation 4. Okay. Okay, that eliminates that variable. This becomes 3 minus 6 is minus 3y equals 7. Now y equals minus 7 thirds. And then at this point... Once you've solved for one variable, you go back into either of these two, 4 and 5, and solve for the other variable, x, okay, by substituting okay. the y value. 
So if I do that over here, I got 5x, and I'm going to use the equation 4 because it's got a coefficient of 3. It's going to take care of that fraction nicely. Yeah. Uh -huh. 5x plus a minus 7 thirds times 3, which is minus 7, equals 12. So 5x equals 19 x equal 19 fifths. Now I got two variables. Now to solve for z, I got to go back up into one of my original three equations, and it's never going to be the modified one. That's got okay. bigger numbers than I need. So let me unerase that line. But that's still not the one I'm going to use. I'm going to use equation 3. It's got lots of little numbers in it. Okay. Okay. So how can I solve for Z? Uh, you could just plug in uh, 3. 3 times 19 fifths. 19 fifths. Minus a minus 7 thirds. Plus z plus. equals 5. And Oof. one of the reasons I do it the way I do it is so that you don't make the mistake there of dropping a negative sign. I notice okay. one of the more common mistakes that people make in math is they'll drop a negative sign, especially if there's a couple of them in a row. If you have minus a minus, boy, everybody wants to leave that minus instead of turning it into a plus. Okay. Okay. And then just do the arithmetic here. I don't think we probably need to do that. Um, mm, no. You would probably multiply both sides by 15 to get rid of both yeah. of those denominators. Uh-huh. And then I'd be dealing with just integers, and I can solve for Z pretty easily. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, let's see. That I think that's it for my homework, actually. All right. Well, let's just make it a forty-five minute session. And uh, like I told your mom, I always just charge for the time that we do. So whatever okay. three quarters of thirty-two cool. is, uh, that's what. Thank you. That'll be. Uh, all right, Nicholas. Well, you. Uh, let's see. Um, we have any? I think I have another Thursday. Um, you're set for Thursday in person at six thirty. Okay. Oh, hold on, that's the wrong. Okay. Right. No, no, no. That was um. Yeah, that's the wrong week. That was last week. Let me pull it up here. Yeah. Ah, I got you. Set. I think it's online. Online. At four o'clock on Thursday. Cool. Sounds good. Talk to you then. Okay. All right. Bye -bye. Cool. See you then. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Where is it? Let's see, close out.